Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of One Man Stream. This is a follow-up episode uh, that we did a few weeks ago when we created this graphic right here in GT Title Designer. And at that time I said that we would come back and we would explain how to control this graphic through uh, BMX UTC and that's what we're going to do today. Uh, just to refresh or just to remind everyone of some of the functionality of this particular graphic. Uh, we do have a clock and this clock counts up to 45 minutes uh, for the first period and then also it picks up at 45 and then counts on up to 90 uh, for the second period. So I can toggle these periods uh, on and off. Um, also when it gets to the end of regulation time it'll also bring in extra time and um, I'll show you how we do that. We actually do that with a little bit of scripting. And we also have a little bit of score animation. Uh, we'll say the home team scored. Metro Louisville FC just scored. So we're going to go ahead and click on this. Uh, you can see where the score goes away and it brings in goal. Uh, goal stays in there for about seven seconds and it goes away, brings in the score. And then with the zoom fade that we talked about in the previous episode, it brings in the score. It does the same thing for visitors. Also brings in goal. It's going to keep it there for seven seconds like we said and then it's going to zoom fade the score uh, we have the ability right here where this logo is we have the ability to turn that logo on and off and we can also change it and all that is done through uh, our utc interface we can also do red and yellow cards do a yellow card for the home player uh, that stays in for a i think about seven seconds as well and then it's going to go away and then we can also do a red card. We'll do a red card for the visiting team. And then just to go ahead and show you some other things, I've uh, created some other graphics uh, within my soccer setup. And I have the substitution graphic. We actually did this a few, um, we actually did the creation of this graphic uh, a few months ago on one man stream. And that's our substitution graphic. This right here is the logo of the team that's being substitu substituted for. This is the player in, this is the player out, and then this is the time that the substitution take, takes place. I have a break graphic that I created. And um, on this right here, it says final, but we can toggle through pregame, first period, halftime, second period, overtime and we can also do penalty kicks as well and we'll take the break graphic away i also made a little schedule graphic i did a little bit of different automation with this one and then i have an opening graphic that we use uh, right at the beginning of the broadcast And then I also created a matchup graphic um, that we use at the beginning of the broadcast as well. But our focus today is going to be on this graphic right here, and I'm going to show you how we control that. So let's go to uh, the vMix UTC layout. And then we'll go ahead and bring our graphic in. First thing right is right up here with the uh, home team and visiting team. And uh, the way that we did this is we used the uh, text field widget. And then I have it mapped to a couple different graphics. I have it uh, mapped to our soccer scoreboard graphic as well as our soccer break graphic. And then these are all the pieces of information within that graphic. Uh, and since this is the home team we're dealing with, we wanna make sure that we have the home team name selected. And we have that on both of them. And then uh, and with it being a text field widget, whatever we type in here is what's going to be reflected uh, in the graphic. So if you, if you were doing a particular high school, say you were doing Western Hills, you would just type that in and you can see that it types in Western Hills. Uh, it also is set up for the logos. I have this set up as a list widget. And what I did is I brought in all the uh, different logos that I have. And let's go ahead and change this logo real quick. 
we'll just go to the drop down menu for the home team we'll go ahead and select this one and you can see where the logo immediately changes and we'll move it back to uh, the one that we had which was louisville fc we have this also mapped to the uh, soccer scoreboard graphic and we have it under the home team image portion of the graphic also for visiting the same thing we brought in all these and we've done this in other episodes and i'm not going to show you how we um, we're not going to go through that again now but you have two buttons here one is save list and one is load list and all we're doing is we're loading a list uh, i make my lists in notepad and then i import them into my vmix utc list widgets uh, by using this button right here which is load list so we can do the same thing we can go over here to the drop down menu we can uh, choose a different logo and you can see that it changes on the visitor side and then we'll go change it back on the break graphic you can see right here uh, where we have the record uh, and that comes in and uh, that comes in right here these are text widgets as well and we just have these uh, map to that particular break graphic. The title mapping is through the, the soccer break graphic. This is the home record we're dealing with. So we want to make sure through all the elements we have in that graphic that we choose the home record text and uh, we do. All right, so let's get into some of the fun stuff now. As, and uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is how we um, are, how we did the automation uh, with VMix UTC to do the score. First of all, I'm going to show you this home score button. And the reason I'm going to show you this home score button is we checked this, or we, um, yeah, we checked this box right here next to the plus one, and we put a link in that says add one home, and that's going to add one to the home score. And we need, uh, we do this link so that when we do the automation, uh, we'll be able to um, script it using this link here that says add one home. So now we're going to go to the home score animate button. And we have a few things that are going on. Set visible off on index one, and this particular uh, index one is a, a text field. So let's uh, click on our all of our title indexes, and we're going to go to text one, and you'll see that text one is home score. So we're going to set visible off for home score. We'll come down to this one. This is two. We're going to set visitor off for visiting score. And then we're going to set visiting off for this third part. And I would imagine that's going to be the dash. Yep, that's the dash that goes in between the home and visiting score. And then we're going to set visible on for index zero, which is also a text field. Let's see what uh, index zero is. And that's our goal text. So we're going to take the score away. We're going to bring the goal in. We then bring in a timer. We leave it on for uh, 7,000 milliseconds, which is seven seconds. And then we do exactly what we did in the beginning in reverse. We're going to set the visible off for the goal. And then we're going to set visible on for the dash, for the home score, and for the visiting score. And then we're going to bring in another timer that's just going to give us give all these other elements time to play out before we do this last thing which is the execute link and that's where the add one home comes in we do it through an execute link we add one to the home score so let's go ahead and click on it and see what happens to the home score as you can see it takes away visitor score the dash and the home score it brings in goal it's going to leave it there for seven seconds take it away and then it's going to execute that final bit of information, uh, which is the add one to the home score. And we're going to do the same thing for visiting score. Again, it takes the scores, the home score, visiting score away and the dash. It brings in goal, leaves it there for seven seconds. And then it's going to fade in with one additional point uh, for the visiting team. Now, the only thing that's really tricky about this graphic is the transition from regular time to extra time and i'll show you how we do that but let's just go ahead and pause this right here 
So we're going to go ahead and skip ahead to the uh, end of regulation time. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and start that. And then you'll see as soon as it hits 90 minutes, it brings in extra time and it starts counting extra time. So it's going to start counting up extra time. Well, this is the only part of the graphic uh, that was a little bit tricky. So we're going to go up here to where it says game clock and we're going to click on the cog. And we're going to see where we check the start and pause. And then we put these links in start time and pause time. And we're going to go down here a little bit further. And you can also see where we mapped it. Uh, soccer scoreboard and then we chose clock text and this is just a uh, timer widget is what we used and you can see on completion there is a uh, command in here that says begin extra time and I'll show you where that begin extra time is okay and if you if we come over here under the start extra time button we'll click on that and we'll see here that we created a, a command. We checked the execute box and that command is begin extra time. So when we run the command begin extra time, it's gonna do this right here where it's gonna run the execute link and then it's gonna start extra time. So where did start extra time come from? With this extra time, we actually have a couple different things going on. We have pieces of information that are coming on and off of the scoreboard. And then we also have the timing properties that are going on as well. So uh, the first thing that happens is we take away, uh, and that's where this comes at, on completion, begin extra time. So let's go to begin extra time. And then that goes to start extra time. So when the extra time starts, when the clock functionality, the timer part of it starts, I wanna make sure that the, that extra time is shown on the scoreboard. So we have a command here when this starts, and then we come down here on start, show extra time. And that's this right here. And under show extra time, we have several things uh, that are going on. And you can see right here, this is the command show extra time. And what's going to happen is it's set uh, X visible on index nine. And that's the extra time text. That's actually this part right here. That's the extra time text. And then set visible off is index 12. And that is the regular time clock. That's the clock that was in white. So it takes that away. And then set visible on is index eight, which is the extra time clock. So that's how the white original 90 minute game clock goes away. It brings in the text extra time. And then it also brings in the extra time clock. So that's the only tricky part about it is you have the clock function and then you have the scoreboard function where parts are, are coming off and on. So I think under pause extra time, all it's gonna do is execute link and pause extra time so we can click on it and the time's gonna pause. And then if we click on start extra time right here, it's just gonna start back. Extra time off is gonna take it away and bring in the regular clock. And extra time on is gonna bring in uh, the extra time uh, wording and the extra time clock. So I hope you enjoyed the curation of this graphic in GT Title Designer. And then today's episode kind of brought it uh, full circle with how we control uh, the partic this particular graphic uh, through vMix UTC. And VMix UTC, I hope that you're beginning to see how powerful it is and all the different uh, functionality and all the different things it allows us to do within VMix as a one-man operation. And that's kind of what One Man Stream has been about uh, this whole time. We started this journey a little over a year ago, and this is already our 47th episode. And honestly, when I started this, I had no idea where it would go. Uh, but the feedback that I'm getting uh, from the folks that have subscribed and to people that are just uh, commenting 
um, in the comments section has been uh, pretty extraordinary. And uh, some of the comments I've actually been humbled by. Uh, one of the things that I responded to just the other day is I believe that remote production is going to be really big in the coming years. And that's one of the reasons why I've, I've developed, you know, my own studio at home. We're going to we're transitioning ourselves into a remote production and i think that's going to be huge so we're going to go into some new topics uh, in the future we're going to expand things a little bit i'm going to look into central control as i learn that a little bit better i'm going to put out some tutorials about that as well as um, the product that we're going to be using mainly for our remote uh, purposes is going to be bird dog cloud so i'll be doing some tutorials on bird dog cloud as well as um, uh, central control I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure that you do give us a like and a thumbs up. And uh, please subscribe so that you'll be alerted as soon as new videos are posted. Thank you.